Hi, welcome to online tutorial videos from JCBR Labs. For more information and to download the source code of this video, you can visit us at www.jcbrolabs.org. You can also mail us uh, at jcbrolabs at gmail.com. Uh, apart from these online tutorial videos, we also provide online training and tuition classes related to MATLAB, Python, and uh, data science, and many more. So, the more information you can get through our website. Apart, uh, further, we also provide uh, uh, help in uh, technical assignments. We also do freelance based projects uh, again on embedded system, MATLAB, Python, data science, etc. So, if you have any such requirement, then you can contact us through our website, which is www.jcbrolabs.org, or you can also mail us at jcbrolabs at gmail.com so moving forward uh, in this video we will talk about uh, Ziegler Nicola's uh, method 2 uh, for tuning of the PID controller in our last video we talked about how to tune a PID controller uh, based on the step response method of Ziegler Nicola's so in this case we will uh, talking about second method of Ziegler Nicola's uh, which is uh, based on the uh, uh, based on the sustained oscillation in closed loop systems okay so uh, these are specific criteria so this method is only applicable for those systems which can be uh, which can be become unstable using a proportional controller only so it applies to those Of those systems uh, which can become unstable <coughs> under proportional controller only okay so there are several steps uh, into it so step one uh, it says like uh, uh, first of all uh, reduce ki and kd ki and kd to zero so that we have only a proportional uh, controller second step is so first of all we need to reduce ki kd to zero then the second step uh, as a second step we need to increase kp from zero to uh, some critical value from zero to uh, critical value let's say kcr uh, at which sustained oscillations occur ok so if oscillations are not occurring then this method cannot be applied for the systems and then third step is uh, calc not uh, value of KCR okay CR and period of sustained oscillation and period so it can be represented as PCR uh, at sustained oscillation once we know these two value KC and KCR then we have a simple rule table to apply to find the values of this Okay, uh, PID. So um, uh, we have a type of PID, and then we have the value of KP, and then TI, and then TD. So I hope you you may know this value of TI and TD from our previous value. This uh, TI was equals to uh, that was KP by KI and then this td was equals to k by kp 
so our overall transfer function was like kp bracket 1 plus 1 divided by ti into s plus td into s right yeah. yeah so if we have a controller p type and we could have pi type and then pid type so these three controllers could be there so the corresponding value this kp will be 0.5 times of kcr and this ti will be infinite and td will be zero and this for pi it will be 0.45 times of kcr and then it will be pcr which was sustained oscillator divided by 1.2 and this will be zero and for this for pid case it will be 0.6 times kcr and then this will be pcr divided by 2 and then ktd value will be pcr divided by 8 okay so uh, from here we can get the values of ti and td so the step is very simple once a transfer function is given to you you just reduce the ki and kd to zero and increase the kp uh, in such a manner so that you can start getting a sustained oscillations into it that means uh, the root starts occurring on the j omega axis right and then you just uh, calculate the value record the value of kcr and the pcr so this value can be obtained from uh, routh hurwitz criteria as well so we will take an example and we will learn how to find all these values uh, uh, from the calculation so let's take an example so example is simple let's uh, our system is given like this one divided by uh, s plus one s plus 3 and s plus 5 right and so now next step is with to make a system with a proportional control only so we have here only k and then we have here plant transfer function g of s right here p minus this is a set point this is a controller this is a plant transfer and this is a cs so our characteristic equation if we write uh, we can obtain characteristic equation from it that will be simply 1 plus k times g of s equals to 0 okay so because we need to increase the value of k so that's why we have put k here so if we expand it it will become like s plus 1 into s plus 3 into s plus 5 plus k equals to 0 and then we can further uh, increase it it will become s cube plus 9 s square plus 23 times of s plus 15 plus k equals to 0 okay so now it has become a stability problem now we need to find the values of k right it is a like a problem of Routh Hurwitz in which we need to identify the value of k for which this system is becoming uh, unstable so now let's create a Routh Hurwitz table right so first s cube terms so it will be 1 and then 23 and then s square term it will be 9 and then 15 plus k okay and then s1 terms so it will be this into this minus this into this divided by this so this one will be 9 into 23 minus 15 minus k divided by 9 so this term will come here so it will become 192 minus k divided by 9 and second term will become 0 and the first term last term is for s to the power 0 so it will be simply 15 plus k now from Routh Hurwitz criteria we know a system will be stable if all these first column element are positive that means uh, for stability condition this 15 plus k needs to be greater than or equals to 0 that k has to be greater than minus 15 this is first condition and another condition could be 192 minus k should be greater than 0 so k has to be greater than 
190 or sorry k has to be less than 192 so this k equals to 192 is the limiting condition at which our system will become unstable okay so if we put uh, k equals to 192 if we put k equals to 192 then this entire row will become zero indicating that we will be getting certain poles of s on the j omega axis so at k equals to 192 so this is the value of kcr right now after putting this k equals to 192 we will get this entire row equals to 0 and we need to identify like at what location poles are occurring so we need to create our auxiliary equation right so the auxiliary equation we need to create so if you are familiar with the this Routh Hurwitz criteria you know all these things so we need to create this auxiliary equation it will become 9s square plus 15 plus k so it will be uh, 9s square plus 15 plus k uh, and equals to 0 and this will be 9s square plus 207 <coughs> equals to 0 and so this s square will become minus 23 now from here we will identify the value of s so s will be equals to plus minus j into 4.8 now we know s equals to j omega so this particular term is the omega that means omega is the radian per second so omega the oscillations cycle is now from here we can get it is radian per second but we need to identify the pcr uh, so pcr will be simply omega divided by 2 pi so if we divide it by uh, in second that means in time period we need to identify so it will comes out to be 1.31 second so it is the oscillation time period which we need to calculate from here remember from our steps calculate the period okay so now we know both the values we know kcr which is equals to 192 and the pcr which is equals to 1.31 second now we can calculate the value of this kp and ki so from the formula this kp value will be simply uh, it is given as 0 0.6 times kcr so kp will be uh, 0.6 times kcr and then pi value will be uh, pcr divided by 2 and then this td value will be pcr divided by 8 So now this will be uh, the parameters or our PID controller. Now we will check whether this PID controller, uh, the parameter which we are, which we have obtained from this analysis, whether they are correct or not. So we will have a simple MATLAB program on it. We will test them on MATLAB. Okay, so let's open MATLAB and let's clear. Now first define the transfer function. So let's say S equals to TF this one so our system transfer function was 1 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 3 into uh, that was s plus 5 right yeah s plus 5 so this was our original system transfer function and let's see it's a step response by this step command okay so this is the step response of it now we will obtain i will try create a pid controller for it now we know the parameters of the pid controller 
that means uh, KCR we define KCR equals to 192 and then PCR is equals to that was 1.31 right now let's define kp kp was kp was equals to 0 0.6 times of kcr right kp was 0 0.6 times kcr ti was pcr divided by 2 ti equals to pcr divided by 2 and then td is equals to pcr divided by 8 yes now we will define our controller so controller was kd into bracket it was 1 plus 1 divided by ti into s plus td into s that was our controller okay is td okay it was a kp was there yeah so let's say the transfer function this is our controller transfer function now create a closed loop transfer function so we can create a closed loop transfer function by feedback command so our forward transfer function is controller into system uh, this is our forward transfer function PID controller into GS controller into system comma feedback path gain that is one the closed loop transfer now let's check the step response of the closed loop transfer function yeah. so that is uh, the output response of the uh, PID control so it uh, it may not look like very good like uh, it may be but it, may, it has 50% uh, of overshoot and that much it is settling too late but it could be a good starting point to fine tune the controller so next step is to fine tune that means slightly increase the value of this kp uh, kpki or decrease the value of this kikd in order to fine tune the controller but it gives us a very uh, easy method to start the values from which we can start like uh, starting points we can get from this ziegler nicholas method so it was a very easy method but uh, uh, it can be applied only those transfer functions or those systems which can become unstable uh, with the proportional controller only. So if your system is a first order system or some system like this which cannot be go to unstable, which cannot have sustained oscillations while increasing the value of KP, then this particular matter cannot be applied here. So these are certain restrictions of the ziegler nicholas matter too. So I hope you understand a lot and uh, you like the video. If you have any comments or any suggestion, then you can let us know by commenting below this video. We will be happy to uh, answer all those queries. Okay. And further, we also provide online training, tuitions. We also help in technical assignments. Uh, we also do freelance based project based on this MATLAB control system. Uh, data science and python etc so if you have any such requirement then you can contact us at through our website which is www.jcbrolabs.org or you can also let us know by mailing us at jcbrolabs at gmail.com so that's it for this video thank you